Hey, Carrie, what do you think of as a typical St. Patrick's Day meal in America? Hmm, probably corned beef, cabbage, and potatoes. Yeah, me too. But for today's St. Patrick's Day episode, we're going to do something a bit more special. Ooh, are we going to make Irish soda bread? I love to bake. Well, I don't want to give it away, but I will tell you that the entire meal goes into a jello mold. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Welcome to Mom's Wooden Spoon. Get your apron on and your fanny flicker ready as we cook up some nostalgia. Ooh, yummy. Happy St. Patrick's Day to you, Kristen. I wanted to start us off with a St. Patrick's dad joke. Okay. All right. Never iron a four-leaf clover. Why not? You don't want to press your luck. Oh, good. It's bad. <laughs> Which made me think of the game show, No Whammies, oh, No Whammies. Big money, No Whammies. Yes. I loved that show. I loved that too. Do you know that they've rebooted it? Oh. They've redone it. Nice. Yes. It's modern. Oh, I, I like the crappy oh, animation. animation. The animation was so bad. So bad. Oh, I mean, yeah, it's so good quality now that it kind of takes away Aww, from how some cheesy of the fun good of it. it was. Well, in honor of St. Patrick's Day, we are going to be making the most special food item that we have ever made, Carrie. I have to say that if I recall, Kristen, this is the item that caught our eye. Upon yeah. initially perusing all of the Mary's memos. Oh, yes. We stopped on this one and thought, oh, my gosh. Because the date on it was March 17th, 1997. And it is a Jello mold. Yes. Which kind of went out of flavor in the 80s. Out of favor or out of flavor? Well, both. Yes. Because it's Jello. <laughs> <laughs> well, this jello is extra special. It does not have peas in it, which Carrie will be happy about. It is called, are you ready, folks? Anne's Corned Beef Luncheon Mold. So I feel like we're going to press our luck in tasting this uh, delight. <laughs> I think we are. It is corned beef with a bunch of raw vegetables mm -hmm. in lemon jello. Uh, yes. So I'm, I'm looking across our workspace here at the ingredients <laughs> And I'm like, oh, I don't care for that. Oh, look, I don't care for that. Oh, not one of my faves. <laughs> the good news, hard-boiled eggs. I love them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But hard-boiled eggs and lemon jello, <laughs> that's kind of sketchy. Oh, and looking into it, I expected the church potluck special where you yes. have the orange jello right. with the um, grated carrots and raisins yeah. in the bottom of it. Yeah. And so there's this huge amount mm -hmm. of clear gelatin with the items in the bottom. So in my head, that's what I'm thinking we're making. Clear lemon jello and the bottom is thick oh. with corned beef and veg. That's not it at all. I don't think so because we have V8 in it, which yep. will color the lemon jello. Yep. And we have Hellman's light mayo. Yes, and a very small amount of jello. So I think the jello really is just to make the mold hold its shape. I think you're right because we found one very similar to this one on the Mary's Memo. We did. And you found a picture with it, and I think it was from Betty Crocker recipe cards. Okay, yeah, in 97? And, no, I think oh. this is maybe a 50s recipe. Now, I did read that Jello molds, I think of them as 70s, right. but their heyday was the 50s. That's right. From the 30s to the 50s, using gelatin to make a mold was really difficult. And so really, home cooks made this to show off. Oh, well, we're going to show something. Oh, boy. So I'm looking at the picture of this Betty Crocker. It's just called hearty corned beef salad. Mm. And it looks basically like... Oh, yeah, um, please tell us. What does it look like, Kristen? Well, I'm going to be nice and say it looks like gelled salmon mousse. It's kind of a salmon-y color with chunks. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember when we were in elementary school and someone would get ill and they had that sawdust? <laughs> That's just saying. <laughs> just saying. Oh, boy. <laughs> Let's get to cooking now, folks. <laughs> 
Okay, we're gonna be making some lemon jello and then we'll chill it for a little bit and then we're gonna to toss all the other ingredients in. I talked to our mom about this because the corned beef luncheon mold is underlined on the Mary's Memo. So specifically that's yes. the one she had interest in. That's right, and so I talked to her and she said that her Aunt Anne made tomato aspic and that made mom think that foods with gelatin in it were really cool. Right. Right, and so she saw this and wanted to make something like a tomato tomato aspect. Okay. And one of the things she talked about being in it was horseradish. And so I was thinking that we ought to try putting horseradish. Oh, yes, please. Oh, I think it might be hiding the jello flavor. I, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to hide quite a bit. I love the flavor of horseradish. Mm. So yes, please. Yeah. Let's absolutely add that in there. You know what? Mom was right on the 24-hour party salad. You are correct. Yeah. Every time she has offered a change, she has been spot on. Yeah. Which, you know, we may have made a tremendous amount of fun of her <laughs> for her cooking. Sorry, Mom. But she's spot on yeah. with all of her changes. That's right. The groundhog soup, we used mm -hmm. less water in that, and it came out tasting like a delicious chili. It yes. was good. Yeah. So yeah. kudos, Mom. Hey, Mom. Yeah. All absolutely. right. So let's see. What do we need to do to make this mold of doom mold of doom dun 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 <laughs> all right we have to dissolve the gelatin in boiling water and it's okay. only a half a cup of boiling water okay so i'm going to let you open up the jello and i'm going to go microwave the water okay and in the meantime we also need to chop up a lot of stuff and so i will get to chopping we do need to dice onion so what it says is that we need to dissolve the gelatin in boiling water and then we will add the V8 juice and chill it for a while until it thickens up. And I think probably that's to help the vegetables hang in midair in the gelatin. Right, bowl. so that you don't have the jello and then all the stuff in the right. broth. Yeah, right. that makes sense. Okay. Absolutely. So we'll give that a try right. as soon as the water is boiling. Okay. So when you mentioned that mom, you know, was inspired by Aunt Anne's tomato aspic. Yes. My absolute first thought is I remember watching the movie, Julie and Julia. Yes. And there's a huge scene in there when Julie is going through the aspic section oh, of yes. Julia's cookbook. That's right. What I remember is her putting in the pieces of parts that create gelatin as they would have back in the day oh, and just right. gagging and just unmolding her first aspect, which was a total and complete failure. Oh no. It just, oh, oh, I hope this is not a failure. Well, we do have the joys of Jell-O brand gelatin. That is true. Yes, which should make life much, much easier. Yeah. So no, she was adding calves feet to yes. make her own gelatin correct oh correct. yeah it was totally homemade wow and so she's taking these you know least desirable parts of an animal and boiling them right oh what a gross task yeah and there were multiple aspects oh oh speaking of the gross gel that comes out like when you're cooking something down that has collagen in it right oh so yeah sometimes when i buy a rotisserie chicken from the grocery store and then i put it in the fridge, there's that gelatin stuff at the yes. bottom of the container, right? Yep. So I was starting to research corned beef. And one of the first searches that came up says, what is the white stuff in canned corned beef? <laughs> Yummer! <laughs> I've only opened like corned beef hash. Yeah. And so the white stuff is like potatoes. potatoes. Right. No, this apparently is a jelly formed of water and proteins from the meat, primarily collagen and then it says more or less the same substance as aspic so we're kind of going to add extra gelatin when right. we add in the corned beef yes well so, that's kind of interesting so maybe that's part of the reason it's a small amount of jello right because we're going to be adding in our own kind gelatin of, there you go that we did not have to boil feet for to right, make right. it happen Thank you. And I will also do a shout out to finalize my comments here about the movie, Julie and Julia, which oh. was a fabulous movie. Yes. But in the recent past, um, the woman, Julie, passed away. I read Crazy that. Crazy young. Oh. Um, which, you know, people get younger and younger as yeah. I get older and older, as it turns out. Oh. But still, crazy young. And so shout out to her and what she did, because I kind of feel like we are kind of taking after what she did. That's right. right. We're not cooking fancy schmancy 
French recipes. Correct. We are cooking good old Midwestern Ohio food that we loved as kids. Yes. And so I think somebody should turn us into a movie <gasps> and we should call it Mary and Carrie and Kristen. Oh, God. But yes, it's great. <laughs> Carrie and Mary and Kristen. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, jerk face, let me dump this V8 into this mixture. Boy, this is delicious. I can't stand the flavor oh of V8. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so um, the jello looked lovely in yellow. It did. And now it is a deep. Ooh. Juicy red. And it smells like V8. Mm. Okay, so I put that in. I've, I've kind of been whisking Ooh, it about. It does. The smell you can has smell it, right? wafted this direction Ooh, now. It says chill until slightly thickened. Well, we don't have enough experience with Jello to understand what that would be, other than Jello shots, which are easy peasy. You pour it in and let it go. <laughs> it definitely needs totally thickened. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the fridge and yeah. we will chop up all this veg that you, yep. that's going to go. I think it's just going to chill until we're ready for it. Yeah. Is. <laughs> I've told a couple of people about what we're making today, yeah. and they are absolutely aghast. This is going to be very interesting. I did a little research into 1997 because in my mind, it's not that long ago. <laughs> Not that I long ago. Know, but it is. It is. I know. It is I, so sad. Yes, it, it really is. It yes. feels like it was like 10 years ago. It does. Mm -hmm. So when I was looking into the songs, the things that happened that year, um, what we might be listening to or watching during uh, St. Patrick's Day in 1997, it, it blew my mind that these songs, these movies are so old. Yes. Right? Yeah. So some of the most popular music in 1997 okay. was. All right. You ready? The Spice Girls. <gasps> if you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of my other favorites. Ready? Unbreak my heart. See you love me again. Do I sound like Tony Braxton? Not even a little oh, bit. Dang it. Did you have a favorite <laughs> Spice Girl? Oh, you know what? Yes. You did? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know that I really knew one from the other. Really? I yeah. like Scary Spice. Okay. I thought she was so cool. She was feisty. Yes. Well, yep. who doesn't like a little feisty? I know, right? And her hair was magnificent. I just thought she was gorgeous. I, I, I don't have any idea what Scary Spice was. <laughs> like, I, re I remember Baby Spice because yeah. she wore ponytails. That's right. right. There was a Sporty Spice because she wore incredibly Sports short... Yeah. 80 shorts you know no, she, she wore she wore running pants shut up really yeah. mm -hmm. oh she wore these amazing <laughs> running pants and i do recall thinking she got to wear like tennis shoes she and did. I thought, if I'm going to be on stage dancing around, yeah, that girl really picked wisely. That is true, because the rest of them like to wear, like, platform shoes. Yes, Ooh. like, they're going to turn an ankle. I know. Good old sporty. <laughs> She's good to go. She's good to go. So, yeah, I that I recall, because I am nothing, if not conscientious, <laughs> of turning an ankle. Oh, that's so funny. I was like, what, 20 years old? And that's my concern. That's so is, funny. Well, she's not going to turn an ankle. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny. I remember listening to the radio as we were driving around Ireland on our honeymoon in July. And the song we heard over and over and I'm over. Sorry. I'm laughing because I was just so oddly specific. We're driving around in Ireland on our honeymoon in July of 1997. <laughs> 1997 at 5.43 p.m. Sheep on the left of us, mountains on the right. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm like, why is she looking at me like that? It's just so oddly specific, but go on. I want to know what was on the radio <laughs> at 5.45. This was just going to be a brief little quip, but now it's like, I'm going to say what was on the radio, and it's going to be, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> Boring. Oh, sorry. It was oh, Jewel. I recently saw her in concert. Yeah. So you really were physically at a concert where you saw her? Physically at oh a concert. Gosh. Yeah, she's got great legs. <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So we only have two things left, it looks like, to chop up or to kind of mush up. <laughs> oh. we, we have to uh, dice the eggs. 
or chop the eggs. And I have my handy dandy little Pampered Chef slicer that has a wire. I'm sure I've mentioned, but I do love the Pampered Chef. I love the Pampered Chef too. From now on, I think we need to use this as an instrument when we're making a change in, a you know, it's like a harp. You ready? Oh, oh my gosh. And harp is the uh, national symbol of Ireland. And it's a beer. It is. An Irish beer. That's a good one. It's tasty. If you don't want something as heavy as a Guinness, yeah. have yourself a harp. Yeah. Yeah. Or have harp with your Guinness and call it a, a black, black and tan. tan. Let me try it again. It's a leprechaun. Oh my gosh. So, um, okay. So I have chopped some celery. I have no idea how much I'm supposed to chop. Do I continue to chop? I think you do because it's a lot. Okay. I think the celery is like the main veg in here. It's one and a half cups. Oh, I'm so. nowhere close. Okay. Well, I'm trying to start on this can of corned beef. Oh, it comes with a key. It how comes fun with is that? Key. What so, do you do with it? Let me see. It. So it looks like it's going to open at the bottom on the wide end. Okay. So interesting. I've never bought corned beef in a can. I've had corned beef hash in a can. Yes. You don't have to open that with the key. Let's see. So I'm going to start twisting. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Look at it's that. It's working. So this is really interesting. So it's cutting That's way fun. down at the bottom. A little strip of metal is peeling off. And then yep. I think we're going to take the what becomes a lid off. And hopefully it'll come out and won't get stuck like Thanksgiving cranberry sauce. Oh, because if it does, then we'll all get to hear the... <laughs> That's as right. it becomes unstuck. <laughs> oh, okay. That came right off. There is, in fact, white stuff. Oh, folks. yes. It looks oh, a lot yeah. like spam. It's unattractive. So I'm taking a look to see if it is just complete mush. or it if I can look like it. No, if I can see some chunks, but... It's all the same texture. The directions say to kind of break it up with a sure. fork. So I'm trying to break it into small pieces because I don't think any of us is going to want a giant chunk of this. Well, I mean, but it's one of the primary ingredients. I mean, I don't... This and celery, right? Ooh, you better like celery if I'm, you're trying I'm going to do a little extra celery. Oh, my goodness. We forgot to tell everybody that we are not saving this delicious treat for ourselves alone. Oh, no. <laughs> when you have something like this... It requires sharing. Oh, yes. So we are having a very special, wonderful guest. And she really is special and giving and wonderful. But I'm also saying that because we're she gonna... was the only sucker willing to come taste <laughs> yes. this. Thank you, Elaine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So our friend Elaine is going to be coming and uh, tasting this with us. It will uh -huh. be... She's a vegetarian. So this oh, will be... No, 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 I'm no, kidding. I'm kidding. So bad. <laughs> Oh boy, she said she'd be willing to try something like this. And I was so excited to have somebody else come try it because my family said, heck no. No. You know what? what? We have doubted Mary That's and right. her meals before. Yep. And we have been pleasantly surprised. That's right. So I'm just going to do my best to maintain a positive attitude yep. in uh, trying this. Absolutely. Okay. And we'll see. This is me being positive, guys. You're doing great, Kiri. Thanks. I'm a little nervous. All right. So let me read this directions again. So we have the V8 juice and it's chilling. Yep. And then when it's ready, we're just going to mix in the eggs, the corned beef, celery, and then it's just two tablespoons of finely diced green pepper and onion and the mayonnaise. Oh, yeah. Oh, we have to mix in mayo. Let's yes. see how and much. And it's healthy because it's specifically called for light, light mayo. mayo. Oh, my goodness. So I went ahead and bought the Hellman's Light Mayo for this. Of course. An entire cup of it is going into this jello. So I'm thinking. Well, I think that's what gives it the salmon-y loaf kind of color. Yes. From the red yes. of the tomato juice and then all of the white from the mayonnaise. Agreed. So I'm thinking we need to add the mayo to the jello first so we can kind of whisk it up without the veggies getting in the way. But first we need to uh, dice up some eggs here. So maybe we should do the Hellman's Light Mayo the Hellsman's Light Mayo. You remember that? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> thank, thank, you, thank you for making fun of me. <laughs> That's what I do. I, I make it so easy. You do. I mean, really. You do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, look at all this stuff that is diced and ready to go I, in. I will say that it looks beautiful. 
There's yep. the pink of the meat and the green of the veg and the white of the egg. That part looks really nice. It does. No. You know, I was thinking to myself, just eating all of these ingredients mixed with mayo would be like a, a sandwich spread. We've had that before. It would. And this begs the question yeah. that I have been pondering oh. since realizing what this loaf was going to look like. Yeah. Do you eat it on something? That's right. Or do you just eat this blob of meaty gelatin because right. in my head I'm thinking that it's like making a corned beef chicken salad. Exactly. You put some meat, you put veg, yeah. you put a bunch of mayonnaise. Yes. Then we're adding a little gelatin to hold it all together so you get this pretty display. Right. Fine. Well, if you gave me a bowl of chicken salad, right. I'd take crackers or yes. put it on bread. Of bread. Yeah. Or I would put it on a salad. Oh. I would have a bunch of lettuce and, right. you know, right. and use it kind of as my dressing meat on the salad. Right. Well, looking at the hearty corned beef salad card that has the picture mm -hmm. on it, there is lettuce at the bottom of it. It looks more like it's decoration. It does. It just yeah. looks, and that is absolutely what they would do to decorate up the jello salad. Oh, yes. Put lettuce and cherry tomatoes. Right. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm super curious. Right. Like, what's the intended way to eat this? In my mind, you get a slice of the gelatin salad and just eat it like that. Ha. Huh. I know. It doesn't my, sound very good. <laughs> my mind would say, get you a nice buttery Ritz cracker. Oh, and that put would... a little bit on your Ritz cracker. That might make it better than biting into this that, gelatinous. Yeah. Maybe when we taste it, We'll have opportunities for various ways to try it. Ooh. And we can each choose. Do you want it on a cracker? Do yeah. you want to just take a blob? Yeah, like that's you a good choose. idea. Because, I mean, let's be honest. If I was coming to your house for a luncheon, yes. you would have the bowl of chicken salad. Right. You would have various bready options yeah. for which I could choose the way I wanted to. There you go. It. And yes. you are the hostess with the most. Well, that's true. I would not. <laughs> I'd make some chicken salad. I'd be like, here, eat it. Slap it in the middle Let's of the table like on. a can of tuna. I would. I would. <laughs> make them some water milk. Yeah. yeah pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. My grandma and I have very similar <laughs> cooking styles, <laughs> a.k.a. No. None. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just no. Just kidding. All right. I'm going to go check the fridge oh, and see okay. how the jello is And don't going. forget the horseradish because no. it's not going to be on the recipe. That's right. Recipe, I was so thinking we want to add that when we add mayonnaise. the mayo. That's yeah. what I'm thinking too. Okay. Let's, let me go check. Okay. And in the meantime, while you're checking, have you seen jello cakes? Jello cakes? You mean poke cakes? No. Oh, because do you remember poke cakes? Oh, I do. Where you yeah. make the jello. And you make like a nine by 13 cake, yep. a plain vanilla one, and yep. then you poke it with a hand of one spoon. spoon. Yeah. Yep. And then you pour a jello over it and it soaks in. Yeah. And then you frost it. Yeah. Like with a whipped cream type. Yeah. Frosting. Now that's an old school yeah. kind of cake. No, no, no. These are totally modern. Really? Jello cakes. Jello cakes. Do you mean gelatin cake? Probably, because jello's a brand. Okay. So, yeah, let's call them a gelatin cake. Okay. They are exquisite. Oh. And I became familiar with them because of the Great British Bake Off. So they had a, a challenge where they did these gelatin cakes. Wow. The winner had like a, a layer of chocolate cake, a layer of strawberry mousse, yes. a layer of chocolate mousse, and then she made clear gelatin dough. Clear gelatin. Yeah. Then, this is the amazing part, you inject food color Ooh. into it and you make... Any kind of pattern you want. Pretty. Typically, they make flowers. Oh, yes. It is gelatin artistry. Yes. They are ridiculous. They are so cool. And then you, you know, turn it out. And so you've got this gorgeous dome wow. with this amazingly artistic, real looking yeah. flower flowers. in the top. Whoa. I'm there amazing. Fancy. Absolutely amazing. Well, that's We're a... not going to make one no. on mom's wooden spoon. No. Ever. That's right. <laughs> Ever. Way too much to do. Way too much. But I yeah. guess it's the new version of impressing your guests. Oh, for sure. Using yes. gelatin. And you know what? I think in the 70s, we were out of the impressing your guests with gelatin molds. Because basically when we went to potlucks at church, we would get gelatin in a 9 by 13 inch pan. Oh, right. sure. And it would have canned fruit in it and maybe some carrots and raisins. Yes. Yes. I remember distinctly 
eating pink jello at a thing at church oh, yeah. and coming home and throwing up <gasps> and thinking that it was the fault of the pink jello. Oh, and so no. I never took jello at another potluck ever again. Really? Yes. So my favorite at the potluck is when they take jello, mush it up, uh -huh. and like, cool it. Oh yes, like fluff, a fluff, a big fluff. A fluff. Oh yes. yeah. No. Oh, I think they used to have that on the Ponderosa salad bar. Oh, you know they did, <laughs> and I always ate that. Oh yeah, that or pudding, that or pudding every time. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right. <laughs> well, Carrie, I checked the jello. Yes. It is nowhere near thick enough. Oh, okay. No. So I think we will take a little break. And when we come back, I think that jello will be ripe for the fill-in. That just sounded gross. It really did. So maybe after the break, the jello will be set enough that we can use it. That's better, Carrie. Okay, not so turny-offy. <laughs> <laughs> That's Turn right, turny offy. Off I expect mm -hmm. this fully to go viral within I the next few weeks. Use it frequently. <laughs> Take it out into the world, my friend. Just don't go and talk to your spouse and go, oh, honey, you are so turny offy. It depends on where you are in that relationship. <laughs> if this is thick enough for us to add in all the veggies and the meat, but it looks kind of like Campbell's tomato soup after you've added the cans of water. It does. <laughs> all right. So, Chimney. oh my golly, an entire cup of mayo. Yeah, but it's healthy because it's light it, mayo. It's light. Boy, a cup of mayo for the amount of filling that we have is a lot of mayonnaise. It is. It is. I'm kind of excited to see what this looks like. I think it's going to get salmon -y colored. It's still pretty darn liquidy, but I expect overnight in the fridge will do wonders. I, I think so. Okay, Carrie, tell the folks what this delicious bowl of V8 juice mayo and lemon jello looks like. McDonald's Big Mac special sauce. It does. It does. <laughs> totally does. It's that salmony pinkish it is. color. It looks delicious. It is a color I associate <laughs> with yum. Here comes the fluffed corned beef. Ooh, loud. Okay. You know, it doesn't smell bad. It really doesn't. And it, it looks like if you put a Big Mac in a blender. <laughs> it kind of does. It really kind of does. The egg. <gasps> oh, we have to add the chopped egg. We don't want to miss out on that. Uh -uh. That's one of the best things. How far do you fill a Jello mold? We probably want to fill it as full as we possibly can. So I think I'm going to get a cookie sheet because I'm afraid as I transfer this very full mold to the fridge, I mean, it is coming to the very When edge. Kristen said she wanted it full, that woman made it full. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stick this thing in the fridge. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this as Kristen moves things into the refrigerator. We ain't coming back till tomorrow because I think this jello is going to take hours and hours and hours to set. Oh, for sure. Yep. So how about if we see you guys tomorrow and then our special guest will arrive. Miss Elaine will try a delicious blenderfied Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think McDonald's is going to want to sponsor us <laughs> on this one. <laughs> Hello, through the magic of technology, it's tomorrow. Elaine is going to be here any minute. She is. And so we wanted to get this bad boy out of the mold. Yes. And onto a plate so she can be shocking on. Oh, yeah. All right. So we chose to use this small copper mold that's really pretty, but it's very intricate. So I'm a little concerned about it coming out. Yes. You and know, she says chose. And what she really means to say is Carrie bullied her. She did. I was so bullied. Okay. I have turned it upside down. And, <laughs> and nothing's, nothing's happening. happening. All right. Attempt All right. number two. Ooh. I wanted to be a little aggressive there. She was. She was aggressive. Oh, it's slicking around. It's slicking around. I see slickery dick. Yes, yeah, slickery dickery duck. The corned beef came out the pot. Oh, oh what? I just made that up right this second. Oh my gosh, Dr. Seuss got nothing on you, girl. <laughs> oh yeah, I see it jiggling in that mold. Oh yeah, it is flowing all over the place. There's flow. There's flow. Oh man. Okay, we're gonna have to get some lettuce or something. I think I have like some spinach to kind of hide the nastiness. 
Oh, this is going to look gorgeous. Oh, my gosh. Oh. The 70s are calling, and they want their mold back, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, look at this. All right. Carrie's going to have to get a picture for y'all because this is party. This is beauty at its finest. All right, to the fridge. Yes. So we have a visual delight <laughs> um, awaiting Elaine. Hopefully it will taste just as appealing as it looks. I hope it tastes better. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys in a bit. We would like to welcome our friend Elaine to the show. Yay. Hello. <laughs> well, you know she's a good friend because she was willing to be our special taste right. tester today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poor thing, our other special guest got to taste cake, right? Right. No, Elaine gets to taste corned beef in lemon jello. Mm. Some say good friend, some say willing sucker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Elaine is a librarian, the mom of an amazing vegan teenage daughter, and a world traveler. So we figured this is probably not the strangest thing she's ever tasted. Am I right? You uh, are correct. It is not <laughs> the strangest thing that I've ever tasted. Uh, that would be on our uh, first anniversary. My husband, Kevin, and I went to Provence. Mm -hmm. And the hotel where we were staying had a nice restaurant. And the special that night was Tete Duveau. Oh, and my former brother-in-law worked in uh, food industry, and he said, you always get the special. Sure. Oh, so sure. I thought, okay. And Kevin got the tattoo bow as well. And, oh and I knew from, you know, my high school French that Tet was head and mm -hmm. Vaux was veal, but I didn't, I, I don't know. I didn't really put that together that that was really going to be a uh, cow head, but oh. it was a oh. uh, oh. baby cow head oh. and it was done in a slice and it was mostly this grayish white connective tissue oh. and then like little bits of what I thought might be meat. And it just was not good uh, oh, at no. all. And most of it, you know, stayed on the plate. Oh, um, my God. But that that was the strangest. So this is easy. This is easy. nothing. It, this might, is nothing. it right. might look like Tete de Vaux, but Ooh, it will no, not taste okay. like that. <laughs> okay. No baby cows were harmed in the making. No. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, yes. I don't know. What's in that corned beef? Mm. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe hooves. Oh. No, that's in the jello. Right. That's right. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, the vegan daughter could not eat the jello. Oh, no. Right. no. Mm -hmm. Do you like corned beef? You know, no, not <laughs> really. I have a lot of memories around corned beef. My dad loves corned beef and oh. we would often drive i'm also from ohio as, yes. you, as you know so we'd often drive to cleveland about an hour from the house to get a uh, special corned beef at the uh, jewish deli oh and my parents would stuff their faces with these corned <laughs> beef sandwiches and i think my sister and i just eat the big garlicky pickles that were free Ooh, on the yeah. table and maybe some fries <laughs> but um i myself am not a uh, corned beef fan how about jello do you have any bad or good jello stories from your childhood uh, I do. Oh. Um, I uh, was a swimmer mm -hmm. and we were told, you know, before race, you should eat a lot of sugar, you know, oh. to boost your energy <laughs> sure. or something right. like that. And my favorite swim meat snack was a box of Jello. Okay. Oh. Sure, it was like a deconstructed pixie stick. So we'd have our box of Jello, which I guess we thought was all sugar. Oh, and right. you'd lick your finger and oh. stick it into the box of Jello, and then you know <laughs> clean your finger off and keep doing that till the box was empty. Oh my god! Wow. And so that was a big treat. Um, this, I guess. <laughs> 80s Ohio parenting where they thought it was just <laughs> fine to turn you loose with a box of jello. And I don't remember how much a box of jello cost. I don't know, a quarter? Probably. That. Probably a cheap snack. It They're was relatively yeah. cheap now. It was cheaper than, you know, Mrs. Gibson's Rice crispy treats that were being sold <laughs> That's at the right. yes. session stand. <laughs> Mrs. So. Gibson. Mrs. Gibson did make a good rice no, crispy. She did. Oh, she yeah. did. But uh, my mom was like, you're not spending any money. Uh -huh. Yeah. Concessions. I bought you. I bought you this jello. That's right. what you get. <laughs> Meanwhile, my dad had hamburger. And <laughs> 
Thanks. We'd be right. just eating the jello. And a corned beef sandwich. And right, a, right. right. Yeah. That he brought with him yeah. from Diamond Grill. Yep. <laughs> okay, ladies. I think we're done procrastinating. Shall I bring out the mold? I can't yes. wait. We got the Triscuits ready to go. Oh, oh boy. Here I go. All right. Oh, and it's a fork thing. You well, don't pick it fork. up in your hand. So wait till you see it because it looks a little different than we had initially anticipated. Okay. It was well, gonna look. I'm picturing a yellow with little bits of corned beef floating in it. Right. So wait until you see it. Okay. I right. think you're in for a surprise. Is this it? This, this is, is it. it. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, oh boy they're celery and yeah boiled egg. i see that and now what's this sort of pink squiggly I, oh, that there's a squiggly the, yeah that's oh, probably the beef. corned beef mm-hmm. and the whole oh. thing has a pinkish tint because we used v8 juice yes. instead uh-huh. of water yeah in the jello yes yep there's also some green pepper and onion i oh, can yeah. see this i mean this is some big celery chunks like i can id those and the eggs and there's like bubbles in the picture of the other mold there were bubbles oh it cuts nicely though kind of but the the molding itself is beautiful i mean the the fluting it's it really looks good i thought it lost a little of its shape but Oh, oh there's like so deviled ham. It Boy. does look like deviled ham, but you're right. There are squigglies hanging out of this. Yeah. Oh, I dropped it. So if you'll pass that to our oh, guest. That is Jeez, a that's texture. a big help thing. <laughs> okay. You all right, Carrie. have to eat it all. Yeah. Carrie, what are just you care. sharing? <laughs> I have a thing. <laughs> Uh, All right, that's fine. May I take a cracker? Oh, sure. I, or is that going to... No, I think that's a good the, thing to do. Yes. This was a huge part of our conversation. Yeah. As it looks like a... A meat salad, which right. you might like eat with a cracker. Absolutely. Well, I plan on using a cracker. I don't know how you cracker. eat it. Like, just eating it with a fork seems creepy. I don't know. Uh-uh. Maybe. Yeah. Let's okay. give it a try. Cracker. Carrie and I are going to eat it with a fork. Oh, wow. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> I got a big chunk of corn. I did too. And I'm going to leave that on there. Me too. All right. So we're going to let Elaine take the first bite. (gasps) We are. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Aren't we the hostess with the mostest? We are. Well, you know what? It's not. I thought I might gag. Yeah. But no, it's um, good might be too much, but it's not (laughs) bad. Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. I can't believe it. It absolutely tastes like. Midwestern Ohio bologna yep. salad or ham salad. So, yeah. Well, we grew up on ham salad. Yep. And you know what? You do not taste the lemon jello. No. It's just kind of a, a mm-hmm. sweet ham salad type tasting thing. It, it really, really is, is not bad. I'm going in for another bite. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the bigger piece of the corned beef is nice. It is not as bad as I thought it was going uh-uh. to be at all. I am nope. thoroughly blown away. This is hands down not hmm. the worst recipe. No, but I would not want to eat an entire slice without a piece of bread or a cracker. Yeah, Agreed. Agreed. I don't taste the V8 and V8 is not my favorite. So that's a good thing. No, no tomato flavor. It's a shocker. Elaine it, keeps eating. Yeah. I, I felt so guilty that we invited her to taste this. Well, Everyone else got dessert and Elaine got this. Now, is there going to be a picture? Oh, oh yeah. People? Okay. Well, then I can tell you in person, it looks super unappetizing. I'm sorry. <laughs> it does. Well, I it mean, does. it's pretty. Yeah. But the color, yeah. the chunks, <laughs> all kind of off-putting, but it's not bad. I'm pleasantly surprised. Well yeah. done, ladies. Well, thank you. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. As mm-hmm. always, thanks so much for joining us. Don't forget to check out our website to see pictures of today's delicious mm. corned beef luncheon mold. Our website even has a place to leave a voice message or written comments. We love our listeners and would enjoy hearing from you. Thanks for listening to Mom's Wooden Spoon. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe. If you want a copy of this recipe or to check out our blog, click on the link to our website in the podcast description. If you'd rather, you could get to our website through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pick your poison. Don't say poison. We're making food.